So each evening before you go to sleep, maybe better that you're already in bed. Just hold sleep back and program your mind. Tell your feelings how you want them to feel. Tell yourself what you want to be, to do, and to have. And actually see yourself being, doing, and having what you want to have. While you're in that state between sleep and wake. Why? Because at that time, the conscious mind or the intellect is mostly suspended. And you see, as long as your intellect is really alert, faith doesn't work very well. Because the conscious mind is going to be telling you all the reasons that you can't have what you want to have. You know it, doesn't it? The reasoning mind is good at arguing you out of what you want to be, do, and have. Isn't that right? So while you're in that slightly drowsy state, you see, the intellect is kind of tired anyway, and that's good that it is. Let it lay down. Just tell it. All right, intellect. Now I lay me down to sleep. <laughs> Go on to sleep, intellect, and work with that subconscious and see yourself as you want to be. I mean, go into your real dream world and you're programming your subconscious. And when you wake up in the morning, you will already be pre-programmed to wake up healthy, to wake up well, to wake up strong, to wake up cheerful, to wake up encouraged, to wake up knowing what to do. Even if you have a problem, you can so program yourself before you go to sleep and rest in the Lord or in the cosmic law of mind so that when you wake up in the morning, you'll wake up and just proceed in the answer. That's why many times when you first wake up in the morning, something that puzzled you yesterday, the answer just pops up. How many of you have had answers just pop up? That's why. Because as long as the conscious mind or the intellect or the reasoning mind was fighting with that problem, the God in you was not permitted to take it and solve it. You were so busy looking at the problem. That reasoning mind, and you got to watch, you, you have to know how to work with all of the various facets of your mind. This is why sometimes it seems like there are two people talking inside of you. How many of you have had that? <laughs> it's between the intellect and the subconscious many times. Some people even describe the middle self. We won't get too technical now. But here in the middle self, I decide that I want to do something or be something or to have something. The higher self says you can have it, you can do it. But the lower self or the subconscious has been so negatively programmed that it doesn't accept it. The intellect comes in and gives you all the good reasons why you can't. But now you know, you can tell your feelings how to feel. You can program your mind in such a positive way. When you program your mind, your mind will always be bringing forth answers to you. Also in the morning, before you go out to meet the day, I'll tell you how I do it. I simply push myself up against the headboard. I don't even get out of the bunk. My God, how in the world could I get up and go out into life without first programming it? That's why some of you, you have to read the damn horoscope. You don't know how to program yourself. You pro let the horoscope program you. That's the worst thing you can do because the horoscope has got it all figured out for you. This is a bad day. Tells you, don't do any business today. Pluto is crossing Mars. <laughs> Saturn and Mercury are in opposition. And Neptune and the Milky Way are not getting along good today. I'll tell you, all of you that, that read those horoscopes, that's another thing you need to do. You need to throw those things away if you don't know how to handle them. They will cross you up every time. You see, you'll be feeding all of that negative and positive to your subconscious and it gets wishy-washy. You wonder why do things happen like this to me? Well, look at how you program yourself. Every day you read that horoscope. One day it tells you it's a good day. The next day it isn't so hot today. The next day it says, watch out for your friends today. The next day it says, don't travel today. You'll have an accident. I think I'm pretty good with my mental dominion, but you wouldn't pay me to read my so-called horoscope on the day. I wouldn't trust it because that subconscious mind sometimes picks up things when you don't even know it's picking it up. That's why many times you can hear a song and you can hear music and you don't necessarily think of that song or that music, but the first thing you know you're humming it or you're hearing it. How many of you do that? And you never consciously tried to learn it. Is that right? That's exactly how you get negatively programmed. You go to bed right after you listen to the 11 o'clock news. Don't do that. If you must read the newspaper, be sure you do it somewhere in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs>
and before you read it, meditate, and afterward, meditate. <laughs> so in the mornings, I push myself up in bed. You see, this, this is all I do. This is my whole life. So many times it lasts all day. You have to get up and go to work. That's not going to work too well. But you see, that is my work. <laughs> in my meditations, I spend a long time because many times I come here in my meditations and I see all of you plainly and I minister to you and I talk with you. You see, I can reach you on that great subjective level. This is how I minister to people. That's why I say I'm not a physical presence. I'm a spiritual presence. So in the mornings, before you go out to meet today, I'm going to suggest maybe you'll set the clock to alarm 10 minutes early, and that'll make a big difference. Just push yourself up into bed. Read the Bible, read some good meditation, or read some good poetry. Things like Lord Byron, I'm the master of my fate, and I am the captain of my soul. Any good positive thought, or get some good positive thoughts out of Reverend Ike's letters or magazine. I like that one that I gave you here recently. How many of you got it? I see myself as a big-time winner in the game of life. Boy, you ready to go out that day. I set God before me this day to bless, guide, and protect me. And you see, right away, the word has gone forth out of your mouth, and it has programmed your day. And let me tell you this, people, if you don't program your mind, your emotions, and your feelings, the world will program your experience for you. Make no mistake about it, you're going to be programmed one way or the other. Some of you may say, well, I don't feel like doing it. Maybe you don't, but somebody will. Most of us, including myself, you know, we have to do a lot of reprogramming because sometimes our parents programmed us negatively and didn't know it. And I keep telling you my experience. My mother, not knowing and not meaning me any harm, programmed me to catch a cold every time I sneezed. Because when I'd sneeze when I was a little fella, she'd say, "Uh oh, you're catching a cold. And up until I was in my early 30s, every time I sneezed, I'd catch a cold. Until I wised up and then I sneezed one day when we were at the Sunset Theater and I could hear Mama say, "Uh oh, you're catching a cold. I said, not this time, Mama. Since then, sneezing doesn't give me cold. And so you parents and you older people, be careful how you program your children. Now, where I was brought up, we were automatically programmed to have the measles and the mumps and the whooping cough. And something else I missed. Chicken pox. Yeah, don't forget that. All right, now let's all do some positive programming. Get your hands free. So remember, don't go to sleep unless you do some meditating and positive programming of your mind, your thought, your emotions, and your feelings, and tell your feelings how to feel. Boy, I was so glad when that came to me in my meditation. I said, what? I can even tell my feelings how to feel. Isn't that wonderful? Man, what you learn here, you know? I don't know where we've been going all the time. I've been there. I'm glad I'm out. So program yourself in the morning, and then you'll want to get into the habit at certain times during the day. If you find yourself negatives coming to you, if you have planted the right spiritual thoughts in your subconscious, then the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. But if you don't put any good spiritual thoughts and materials into your subconscious mind, when negatives come along, your subconscious mind will just soak in the negatives. And you'll have to go home from work sick in the middle of the day and don't even know why. You see, when you walk into your job in the morning, Susie will look at you and say to you, Janie, you feel all right? You say, well, you know, I don't know. I have felt better, child, you know. Then you see your subconscious is picking up already, you know. There's the first blue suggestion. Then you'll go on down and you'll meet Anna Mae. Anna Mae will look at you. By then, you see, you're beginning to vibrate this negative feeling, you see. And Anna Mae will look at you and see you vibrating this, and she'll say to you, Child, you know, you don't look so good today. I don't? No, child. She said, well, you know, to tell you the truth, I, I don't really feel the best. So you drag a little slower then, you see. You see how the world mind is programming you because you haven't programmed yourself? By that time, you'll meet your friend that you usually eat lunch with. And she'll ask you real fast, are you going to eat lunch with me today? And then all of a sudden, she'll pick up that negative vibration from you that you're already throwing out even stronger now. And she'll say, oh, is something wrong? <laughs> you say, well... You know, I, I was going to try to make the day, but she said, child, I think you ought to go home. 
And you say, well, you know, I do think I'll go and tell the boss that I ought to go home today. So on your way to the boss's office, you meet old Fanny Sue, the witchcraft believer. Old Fanny Sue said to you, said, child, something's wrong with you. You better go and see about yourself. Child, you better go and talk to Madam Zeus. So then you drag on into the boss's office. The boss said, what's wrong, Susie? He said, my God, I never saw you looking like this before. He said, you want to go home? Oh, yes. So you drag on out and on down the street and go on down to 116th Street and talk to Madam Zeus. When you walk in, she knows she's got you. See, she sees that you don't have any control over your mind or your emotions or your intelligence or anything. She knows that you are just ready to have the ring put in your damn nose. Now, there's one thing I must give some of these witchcraft workers credit for. Some of them are very good in knowing the workings of the mind, but they take advantage of you. You see, when you know the secrets of the mind, you have to be honest. Because you can misuse this thing. And many of you, you've been mentally malpracticed. So if you don't program your mind, baby, this world will program it for you.